So good evening and welcome to tonight's presentation. My name is Sabrina Cedeno. I am a program associate here at Fractured Atlas. If for any time throughout this presentation I'm going too fast or you can't hear me, please let me know uh, with the chat functionality. I really appreciate everyone taking their time to attend this webinar. We love having proactive members who go out of their way to learn about our program policies and procedures before, that they, before they start fundraising. So at any time, again, if there's an issue or if you have a question, you can use that chat functionality and it'll alert me. I will try to hold questions to the end, but if something feels relevant to what we're talking about now, then I will address the question while I'm going. Tonight's webinar is being recorded, so I don't want you to feel pressured to take a whole lot of notes. We will be able to send you this presentation later on in the week, and you'll be able to share it with your friends, let them know how awesome Fresh Atlas is. And then uh, lastly, we're going to get started. <laughs> Okay, so just some quick numbers before we dive in. So in the last 12 months, our fiscally sponsored projects have raised over $23 million. So that was just, I'm sorry, I said the last month, <laughs> the last year, the last 12 months. So our projects are raising money and this is just a number to represent that. Currently, we have just over 4,000 fiscally sponsored projects across the country doing great work. And to support all those people, our staff is made up of 11 individuals. So yes, that is correct. We're able to run this program with just 11 of us. Uh, and just backtracking to our fiscally sponsored projects, these projects are made up of uh, people who are doing one-off discrete projects like a single film or a dance production or sometimes they can be an ongoing artistic activity like a startup theater company that's producing new work or a work in progress of a visual artist. So again, those, that number represents a cluster of both of those things. Uh, so ultimately, why I'm bringing these numbers to the forefront is that Fractured Atlas does have the largest fiscal sponsorship program in the nonprofit arts sector. Uh, so just wanted to highlight some of the numbers that we're proud of, and we're proud of you for joining these numbers. And soon we're going to be raising even more money because you're going to be raising money. So we're excited about that. Okay, so ultimately, Fractured Atlas is here to help. We're able to run such a large program with a short staff of just 11 people because we've custom built some, uh, some amazing tools that you can access on your, on your own, on your fiscal sponsorship page. So if you do have questions, you can give a, uh, call us or shoot us an email and you could be working with anyone in our team. Uh, so, So ultimately, in tonight's presentation, I'm going to outline some of the tools that are available to you on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Uh, and like I was saying before, much of this program is automated. So there's a great deal of functionality at your fingertips that allows you to control a large portion of your fundraising activities. So I'm going to be going over what those tools are, how you can access those tools, uh, and then all the things you can do in this program and how the, the staff is here to support you. Uh, so we're going to be jumping into that right now and moving forward. So this is your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Once our board of directors approves your project for the program, you will be able to log into our website and access your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. This is your go-to portal for everything and anything on your My Fiscal Sponsorship. This is where you're going to be interacting with the program. This is also where you're going to be uh, doing a lot of the things I'm going to be referring to. So we're going to be going back to this page a lot. There's no substitute for hands-on learning. So while I'm going over everything in this presentation, I do also want to encourage you to visit our knowledge base afterward, where you can find even more information and get walkthrough steps on some of the things that I've covered today. You will be able to find that in the help 
section, if you look at the screen in front of you, it's on the top right, it'll say help and knowledge base. And I'll talk more about that soon. So before we get into all the things this program can offer, I do want to uh, differentiate between earned revenue and contributed revenue. One of the very first things to understand about the fiscal sponsorship program is that our program does make the difference between earned and contributed revenue. So when we say earned revenue, we're, mean, we're referring to funds given in exchange for a good or service. This is usually known as a purchase or fee for a service that is not considered tax deductible. And when we talk about contributed revenue, we're talking about any money any amount of money given without the expectation of receiving something in exchange. So this is usually a donation or a grant in which a donor gives an amount of money to support your work but does not want anything in return. Contributive revenue is generally tax deductible. So since fiscal sponsorship is fractured atlas, extending some of its benefits of our 501c3 to our fiscally sponsored projects so that they can fundraise, we are only allowed to accept contributed revenue, meaning earned revenue, things, money that you make off of, whether it's selling tickets or selling merchandise, the, all those funds would go directly to you. Fractionalists can accept contributed money for the purposes of your fiscally sponsored project, we can process that and we can issue your donors tax receipts. So before we get into the nitty gritty, just wanted to make that distinction clear. Also note that we do accept projects that do have for-profit investors. Though we cannot process private investments or equity, there is an addendum we ask projects to sign if they are expecting for-profit investors. So if you fall into uh, uh, that situation where you have for-profit investors approaching you, then definitely loop us in. We'd love to hear that. That's great. Uh, and we want you to sign that addendum so that we can make sure that that is staying separate from the funds that we uh, process. Okay, uh, so again, just wanted to recap, fractionalists can process contributed revenue, funds that are given to you without uh, the expectation of receiving something in return, and earned revenue, that's funds that you receive in exchange for a good or a service, will remain under your discretion and be given to you. Okay, so now that we've differentiated that, we're gonna talk about what kind of what kinds of donations Fractured Atlas can process and how you can start requesting those. So we can help you process donations in three different ways. We can do debit or a credit card, which you can direct donors who want to give with a credit or debit card to your donation landing page on our website. And I'm gonna talk you through how to access that and how to edit that. We can also accept donations made by check. And we can also accept donations of in-kind goods. So if someone's donating by a check, they wanna, you wanna make sure they're, don uh, they're making the check payable to Fractured Atlas and we'll get deeper into uh, check donations and processing them. And then if someone is donating an in-kind good, we wanna make sure that these donations are tangible items that you can feel with your hands and they're in real time and we'll get further into how to process those as well. I'm sorry if my voice is going in and out. I'm kind of uh, getting over a little cold right now. So sorry about that. Okay, so Back to what we were talking about, the very first way you can accept donations is credit or debit card. And like I was saying, you can accept that on your donation landing page on our website. So this is what a donation landing page looks like. Each one of our fiscally sponsored projects has a donation landing page on our website. So again, if you have donors that want to give a credit card, debit card, this is where you'll send them. Uh, and you'll see the donate now button on the corner where they can uh, click on that and then enter in the amount that they wish to donate. Uh, 
we do have a credit card limit on the donation landing page. So the limit is $20,000. If you have a donor that wants to give more than $20,000, I would suggest letting them know that they, that they should do that within multiple charges. Uh, and maybe take about a five minute break between each charge so that our system doesn't uh, mistake it as a duplicate charge. But uh, with that being said, when donors donate on uh, the donation landing page, they must enter in an email. And as soon as the donation has been processed, we will automatically send them a tax receipt to that email. Please note that fiscally sponsored projects are prohibited from collecting credit card information from their donors and entering it in on the website as their own. Donors must input their own debit or credit card information or contact Fractionalis to process donations over the phone. If fiscally sponsored projects started collecting uh, their donors' credit card information, they would be opening Fractionalis, Fractionalis up to some liability issues since fiscally sponsored projects are not authorized users of our credit card processor. So we really want to avoid that. And again, if you have a donor that needs help making a donation, by all means, have them call us. We can help them over the phone. We can take the information over the phone, but you shouldn't be taking your donor's credit card information. And then lastly, this donation landing page, again, is public and it's, it's on our website. So this is where you should be updating your content uh, for what you want your potential donors to see. It can be an image, it could be a YouTube video or Vimeo, uh, along with a brief description of your project, what your current activities are, maybe what your fundraising initiatives are at the moment. So this is what your donation landing page looks like. And now I'm going to show you how you can edit that. So again, your fiscal sponsorship, uh, your fiscal, my fiscal sponsorship page, that very first icon is going to say online profile. If you click on that, you'll see current profile and edit profile. You can make edits to your profile anytime. When you make an edit to your profile and hit submit, it will be assigned to someone on our team who will then review your changes before approving them and making them live on our site. Reviews take about one to two days. And once it is approved, you will receive an automatic email confirming that the page is now live. If we should have any questions before approving, we will reach out to you via email just for, for the clarification. So now going into the second way we take donations, which is checks. If you have a donor that is not comfortable making an online donation, you can accept donations of checks. You would want to make sure that the check is made payable to Fractured Atlas. We cannot process donation checks that are made payable to the project. So please make sure uh, it says Fractured Atlas on the payee line. Make sure it's dated, make sure your donor signed it. Uh, and then on the memo line, your donor should indicate uh, your, the name of your fiscally sponsored project. So that's where they would indicate who you are. Now, for processing donation checks, we do ask that the donor sends you the donation check before it is then sent to Fractured Atlas for processing. And the reason why we do this is because we ask that you report this check on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page before then sending it to us. So you're going to, again, go back to that, My, that beautiful My Fiscal Sponsorship page. And the tab right underneath Online Profile, you'll see Donations, and then you'll see Checks and Reports. And this is what a sample report looks like. So we're asking you to ultimately create a donor record for your donor. You're gonna give us their name, their contact, and then any information that's on that, uh, that check. And once you do this, you'll hit submit, and that'll come to us, and then you can mail us the check for processing. So we do need the physical check as well as this report in order to process donation checks. You will not believe how many unreported checks arrive at our office, and we have to do a lot of detective work trying to figure out who is this check for, 
uh, what's the project, and then ultimately, you know, that ends up with us mailing back the checks to whomever they sent it, uh, whoever sent it. Uh, and we, you know, that just delays the processing of the donation and you getting those funds. So we really want to make sure that when checks come to us, we know who they're going towards. So you reporting it online makes it so much easier. It's also, you know, you reporting this information for yourself to then access at a later time. Uh, so just to recap before we move on, someone wants to give you a check. They're going to make the check payable to Fractionalis. They're going to hand it to you or mail it to you. You're going to report it on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, and then you're going to mail it to us for processing. Once a donation uh, is, a check donation is received in the office, we process those daily, and you will be emailed a tax receipt for you to then forward on to your donor with your thanks. So credit card donations, tax receipts get emailed directly to the donor at the time of the donation. Check donations, we email the tax receipt to you for you to then send on. So good thing to, to note. Okay, now we're gonna cover something called the major gift letter. So for check donations, we can receive check donations of any size. It's not like on our credit card. Uh, we have a credit card limit for check donations. There, there is no limit. So we can receive any size check donation. The thing that we do ask is for check donations of $2,500 or more that your donor also sign an extra piece of documentation called the major gift letter. So this is a sample of what the major, getter, major gift letter looks like. This is a form letter template that you can download on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page and upload to your donation report when reporting a check donation. So, sorry, I went back too fast. So you can, if you don't have this letter at the time of reporting the check donation, that's perfectly fine. You can still report the check and still mail us the check for processing. We will still process donation checks that we receive in the office, even if we don't have a major gift letter yet. However, we will not be able to make these funds available for release to you until we have the major gift letter. So. Once you send us the check, you can send this major gift letter to your donor and just say, hey, you know, please sign this. Our fiscal sponsor requires it. Uh, and they can sign it and then send it directly to us and we'll add it to your donation or they can send it to you for you to then add to the donation report. Either is fine. We do ask this because as a nonprofit, we are required to submit ourselves to an annual internal audit, and during which our auditors look for this extra verification of your donor's intent to donate to Fractionalis for the purposes of your project. So we really need this because it is important for Fractionalis and our audit. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And again, you can download this on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page on that donations tab that we looked at before. So items, so now that we covered what we can accept, so we went over checks, we went over debit credit card donations, now we're gonna talk about what we cannot accept. And that is donations of cash and money orders. So, In order for us to be able to issue a tax receipt, we need to be able to directly link money back to a specific individual or entity. A credit card transaction or a check with a donor's bank account and routing numbers on it provides that direct link. Because cash and money orders are not specific to an individual financial institution or bank account, they do not provide that paper trail that we need back to the donor. Thus, we cannot accept cash or money orders but you can, if you have a donor that wants to give and is not interested in a tax receipt, then you can accept the cash, you can accept the money orders, but if you have a donor that wants a tax receipt, then they need to give either check or credit card. Okay, so now we're gonna go over non-cash gifts uh, or in-kind. 
So we can accept non-cash or in-kind donations. These have to be physical, tangible items that you can touch with your hands. And the ownership of this has to be fully donated over to your project. So let's unpack that a little bit further. Oh, I think I went. So, so what, what we mean by physical, tangible items is, for, let's use an example. If you have a restaurant that wants to donate food for your next board meeting, food is a physical, tangible item, so they can receive a tax receipt for the food that they're donating. But if they also wanted to receive uh, tax deductibility for the catering service, then that is a service and we wouldn't be able to uh, process a tax receipt for that. So I'm gonna get into it a little bit further right now. So again, we can process physical, tangible items that are donated to you, but things that don't fall into that would be something like time, like a service. So the caterer donating that time would, we wouldn't be able to process a tax receipt for that. Um, and for the reason for these things is that uh, the, a person's time is not, a person's time or service is not considered by the IRS to be charitable or a tax deductible donation. So that, that's really why we wouldn't be able to do that. However, if you did accept gift cards or gift receipts from a business, then we can, uh, process that as an in-kind donation as well. So in order to be tax deductible, uh, donations need to be fully donated over to the charitable purpose of your project. So donations of rent or rented items wouldn't count as well. If someone gives you equipment for free that they would normally charge a rental fee for and you need to return the items when you're done, that's really more of a loan. And even if they are waiving the rental fee, we still wouldn't be able to process that since it's not being fully given over to you, it's just being rented. Similarly, uh, donated space rentals wouldn't count as tax deductible as you're not being given what the IRS calls full interest in the property. In other words, if you need to give it back at the end of your use, it's not considered a donation. So we went over time and space. Those are two non-cash things that we cannot accept. Finally, we cannot accept donations of donated airfare, air miles, or automobiles. So just to recap this page, if someone wants to donate a non-cash item, say it's food for a benefit that you're doing, or maybe it's lights for uh, a newly renovated space that you just opened or art supplies, we can process those tangible items as non-cash donations. But things such as the time that it took someone to do a service for you or rented space uh, or airplane miles, then we would not be able to process anything and that falls into those three categories. Again, if you have any questions or your donor wants to donate and you're not sure if it falls into one of these categories, please reach out to us. We're happy to assist you further. So now I'm gonna talk about how to report non-cash donations. So we went over you know, where your donors go when they wanna give credit card, debit card. We went over how to report checks to make sure that they're processed for your project. So now we're gonna talk about how to report non-cash donations. So as with check donations, you'll need to report non-cash donations on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. And here's where you will also be able to download a non-cash donation letter. So. This is an example of a non-cash donation letter. It's another simple form letter for your donor to fill out where they will provide a description and value of the, out of the items that they are contributing. So they're gonna let us know what the fair market value is for these donated goods. And this is what it looks like. You can upload the non-cash donation letter to the donation report when you submit it. 
For non-cash donations valued at $2,500 or more, we do require a photograph of the donated item or items. So be sure to take a picture before you report it, even if you're not too certain if, if you can't remember what the value is, still take a picture of it anyway. We love to see these items anyway, so still take a picture. Okay, so now that we talked about the donations that we can accept through Fractional Atlas, just to recap, remember we spoke about donations of debit or credit card, we spoke about check donations, and we touched on non-cash or in-kind donations. So now we're gonna talk about the administrative fees. With all donations that we process for the purposes of your fiscally sponsored projects, we deduct an administrative fee to cover the cost of running this program. Our administrative fee pays for our website maintenance, staff time, and things like credit card processing and bank fees. The fee starts at 7%, but as you raise more money, the fee is lowered on check donations. And I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna show you what that breakdown looks like. So if you raise 150,000 or more over the lifetime of your fiscal sponsorship, the administrative fee on check donations goes down to 6%. At 500,000 or more, it is reduced to 5%. If you raise 1 million or more, the fee goes down to 4%. And yes, we have had projects raise that much money through us. The fee remains at 7% for credit card donations as the processing fee that we incur does not change on those donations. So as we we also charge a fee on the stated value of donated non-cash items. So when you're reporting that non-cash item, you can let us know whether you would like us to charge the fee to your credit card on file or deduct it from your, your project's available fund balance. Something I will also note is that when donors are donating on your, my, uh, on your donation landing page on our website, that's where they'll go to donate with credit card or debit card. We do offer your donors the option to cover the 7% fee, so to inflate their donation just a little bit so that you can get the full amount that they intended to donate. And nine out of 10 times, donors do opt into that. So if you are worried about this fee or you have a donor that is eager to cover the fee, you know, that's always acceptable. They can add that uh, extra amount to their check donation or they can donate on your donation landing page and we'll do the math for them. We'll let them know exactly how much uh, they can increase their donation so that you get the full intended amount. Okay, moving forward. I'm gonna show you quickly where you can view your fund balance. So if you are reporting a non-cash donation and you want to have the administrative fee taken out of your fund balance rather than charged to your credit card. You can view your fund balance before uh, doing that. And you can view that on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Underneath info slash reports, you'll see fund balance. So you'll see fund balance and then available. All right. So I'm going to take a deep breath <laughs> because now that we've discussed all the different types of donations that we can process and went over quickly some of the donations we can't process, uh, now let's talk about how we can get people to actually consider making a contribution. All right, so let's slow it down and go back to the beginning. So we ask, ultimately, this is how we get the ball rolling. So it is this, and this is as often the first hurdle that building, that budding arts entrepreneurs encounter. Every day we talk to artists and art startups who experience an initial nervousness about actually asking people for money. We get it, we understand completely. We encourage our fiscally sponsored projects to consider themselves in good company. All nonprofit artistic ventures in the United States require philanthropic support to keep in operation. That goes for the Metropolitan Opera, the Getty Museum. So don't consider it panhandling or begging, consider it an offer. You're offering potential patrons an opportunity to get involved with something larger than them. And with fiscal sponsorship, you're also offering tax deductibility. 
So we really want you to uh, start thinking about how you can get your fans, your friends, your family members involved in what you're doing. And a lot of times that just starts by having the conversation of what you are doing, you know, talk about uh, what you're doing and then take it from there. So as soon as you're approved for, for fiscal sponsorship, we recommend that you send out an appeal asking for people to make a contribution and to let them know what their donation, what, that their donation will now be tax deductible. So you're excited to be joining Fractionalist. We're excited to have you share that excitement. Let, let your friends know, let your family know, post it on social media. You're now fiscally sponsored. Donations to your project are tax deductible. Uh, we want you to share this good news. So it could be in an individual, it could be in a letter or it could be an email blast. It could be a newsletter, a campaign. You can host an event to let everyone know the good news. All those are great ideas. Uh, but as long as you're keeping people in the loop and, and sharing and spreading that word, then you're taking the, the right first step. So you can consider all the things that I just mentioned as part of your, your fundraising strategy if you don't necessarily want to do them right now. We do have specialized templates available for, available for you on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. So if you do want to craft uh, a letter to your fans and your friends and let them know, hey, this is the new project that I'm doing, you know, I'm fundraising for this amount and I'm now fiscally sponsored by Fraction Atlas, we have provided you with these templates so you can just get the, the ball rolling on that. Um, and Crafting a good letter is more than just plugging in your info into a formula and pressing send. So we really want to strongly encourage you to use these templates as a brainstorming uh, tool to get you started. And then before you actually send out, we do ask that you send it to us for review. So a good rule of thumb is anytime you mention fracture list or promote uh, pay, patrons tax deductibility, you should run it by us before sending it out. And we require this for a few reasons. The first is that it's always helpful to have another pair of eyes take a look at what you're sending out. So we review tens of thousands of letters and fundraising materials and we we feel confident in offering uh, some tips and tools to potentially maximize the effectiveness of your fundraising, fundraising materials. So we'll definitely give you feedback where we see appropriate. We'll give you that encouragement to let you know, oh, this is great, you know, this is exciting. Uh, and we'll definitely be sharing our knowledge, you know, uh, on, on fundraising with you. So we will offer tips and tools, provide feedback. And then lastly, we're also looking to make sure that you're correctly representing the fiscal sponsorship relationship. So that goes into the standard text. So to make things simple, uh, we have crafted some standard text that we require you to include with your donor solicitation materials. This can be found in our knowledge base that I was directing uh, in the beginning. It's under the help tab uh, when you log on to your fiscal sponsorship page. It's also available in the templates that I was showing you. So that standard text is there. Um, it's just a quick two sentence paragraph that summarizes the fiscal sponsorship arrangement. You're welcome to include this as fine print at the bottom of your materials but it will need to be somewhere in your materials. We're also looking to see what you're offering donors in exchange for their contribution. For example, advertising space. So you're not permitted to sell advertising space through your fiscal sponsorship or give it away as an incentive in exchange for a donation. You are, however, allowed to offer corporate sponsorship in exchange for a donation. So what's the difference? Well, it has to do with who maintains control over the content and placement of the content. 
If your, contribu if your contributor has control over what will be listed in your materials and or if you are in some way endorsing their products or services, this is considered advertising. Now, if you maintain control over the content and you're not endorsing their product or service, then this is considered corporate sponsorship. So that's the, that's the difference. Typically, corporate sponsorship comes in the way of a logo or a name placement on your website or other materials. Frequently, this will be posted as a thank you or in, in recognition of the sponsor. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help you differentiate. Uh, so just to recap again, ad space is a donor reaching out to you uh, and saying that, you know, yes, they want to give you money, but they need this image and this text to go in your program. That would not be a corporate sponsorship donation. That would be them paying you, again, earned revenue, them paying you for you to then sponsor, uh, I'm sorry, for you to then give them ad space. Now, if it's corporate sponsorship, you can say, you know, give a donation at the $5 level and I'll include your name and logo on all flyers. So that would be co corporate sponsorship because you're controlling where the placement of the logo is, the name, you're listing all your donors so it's not just, you know, special treatment. Uh, so those are just two examples. Other things we're gonna be looking for when you send us your fundraising materials for review is are you running a raffle? This might be a good idea, but you're prohibited from running it through the fiscal sponsorship with us. This means you cannot award donors raffle tickets in exchange for a tax deductible donation. Raffles are considered a form of gambling, which is regulated at the state level. And so it's not something that Fractionalis really wants to get involved in. So no, no raffles. Okay, so now we're gonna get into partially deductible donations. Whenever you offer donors rewards or goods or rewards of goods or services in exchange for their contri contributions, this makes their donation partially deductible above and beyond the fair market value of the rewards that they're receiving. So I know I just said this long sentence, what the hell did that mean? So ultimately you can offer goods in exchange for a donation. So I'm sure many of you have seen like crowdfunding campaigns where you'll see perks offered in exchange. If you give a hundred dollars, I'll let you walk on set of the film. So something like that, or, or be, or you'll receive an exclusive t-shirt and water bottle. So any, anything given in exchange for a donation. And you can do this, how, Ever, we need donations to at least be partially tax deductible. So you won't be able to offer donors rewards of equal or greater value to the amount that they are contributing. Such an exchange no longer becomes contributor revenue and is a purchase. So I'm gonna give you an example. If you have a $10 t-shirt, if you give a $10 t-shirt in exchange for a $100 donation, so you have the $100 donation level and in your level, you say, give $100, we'll give you a free t-shirt. That t-shirt is worth $10, so your donor's tax receipt will equal $90. So your donor is giving above the value of the item that they're receiving, and their tax receipt will reflect the difference between what they're giving and what they're receiving. The full donation minus the admin fee will still go to you, but we're just talking for the tax deductibility. This would be considered a partially deductible donation. And if that, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. We can talk about that further. Because so, it, it, it can be exciting to offer partially deductible donations when you are doing a crowdfunding campaign or a pitch, you can you know, offer perks. Sometimes that's exciting. So, so one place where partially deductible donations often come up is in crowdfunding campaigns. Frequently fundraisers will offer rewards in exchange for donations through their campaigns. 
we have a platform available for our fiscally sponsored projects, which allow for you to run a crowdfunding campaign and still offer your donors a tax receipt. What? What? Isn't that great? Um, this includes the ability for you to set up rewards with a fair market value attached so we can issue accurate tax receipts for your donors. So if you are offering something in exchange for a donation, you would want to know what the fair market value of that is. So if you're offering a water bottle, do some Google research, figure out what the fair market value of that water bottle is. Uh, if you're, you know, because even if that water bottle was given to you for free and you didn't have to pay anything for that water bottle, that water bottle still has a value. And if you're offering it in exchange for a donation, we need to accurately depict that fair market value so that your donor's tax receipts are as accurate as possible. In the year 2018, it is likely that you've heard of crowdfunding, you've supported campaigns, so you know what this is. And we encourage all of our projects to try it out in their fundraising spectrum. You can do this through Fractured Alice again, uh, and you'll, you'll find that that link on your your my fiscal sponsorship page it'll be under accessorize so you can try crowdfunding and if you are interested in offering perks excuse me <laughs> if you are interested in trying perks but you don't necessarily want to do a crowdfunding campaign just yet you can offer perks as uh, you can offer giving levels to your donors on an ongoing pay on an ongoing basis, and they will show up on your online profile. So that donation landing page that we were on earlier, you can add these on your my fiscal sponsorship page underneath donations. You'll see giving levels. So that's where you'll add giving levels, and I'm going to show you an example of some. So here is. Uh, here are some examples of some giving levels. So your donors will be presented with options on our website for different levels that they can contribute at. And if you want to offer donors rewards, uh, you can do so here and that would make their donation partially deductible. So trying to see, you can see here it says $500 or more and then it has a little description. So sometimes you don't necessarily need to be giving something in exchange. I like to recommend giving levels to people just because I think prompted amounts are great. I know I work best with prompted amounts. If you tell me to give 10, $20, I'm, I'm, gonna, give, I'm gonna give that. But if I have to spend time debating on how much I should give, then you know I, I like prompted amounts. So I always encourage people include giving levels it's also a great way to then say you know give twenty dollars and become an all-star you know you can give people titles that way and and that people get excited with things like that too uh, and then also within each level you can then highlight what giving within that level will will help you accomplish so say if you uh, have a level that's twenty dollars you can say Hey, $20 helps us get a whole new pack of crayons for our Saturday classes. Uh, you know, so it's, you can really engage people with giving levels. It doesn't always have to be about uh, giving something in return. You can just be creative and, and find new ways to excite your fans. So that, that's what I like to think about giving levels. Okay, now we're gonna get on to the exciting exciting and scary world of grants. <laughs> Applying for a grant. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is Fractionalis grant eligibility requirements. Fiscally sp fiscal sponsorship can open the door to institutional funding like foundations, corporations, and as with approvals of your individual solicitation and crowdfunding campaigns, we want to be involved with you for when you're applying to grants. So before you start looking for grants, uh, we're gonna cover the eligibility requirement. We require that projects raise $1,000 before they are eligible to apply for grants through us. If you can show you've raised $1,000 through contributed, not earned income, then we can waive this requirement for you. So if you're brand new to Fractionalis and the fiscal sponsorship program, but you've raised money for your project before coming to us, 
shoot us an email, call us. We are happy to waive that. If you can show that you've raised at least a thousand dollars of contributed revenue up to this point. We do have this in place uh, just because we want to help you have the strongest applications possible uh, and being able to show that core support is extremely helpful when you're applying to grants and you can say, you know, this is the support that I've raised already in my community through my fan base and it, it, it makes your application stronger in the very competitive world that is grants. Uh, and it also funders like to see that they're not just the sole support all the time. Okay, so now that we've covered the eligibility requirement, staff review. So if you have a grant that you're interested in applying for, or maybe you've already done all your application and you know this is the grant for you, before you hit send, send it to us for review first. So you can email us uh, your application, your documents, and let us know the name of the grant that you're applying to, send us any guidelines, uh, link to their website if you have it, uh, and then the, the deadline that you are submitting for. If the application is online, you'll wanna send us your login information, we could go in and view. And the reason why we are uh, doing this, one, because you know, similar to your solicitation materials, we wanna be able to give you that feedback, give you that second pair of eyes, help look over your budget, make sure you have everything in order. But also many of the times when you're applying for grants, Fractionalis will be the applicant of record. Since we are the 501c3 and you are fiscally sponsored by us, we will most likely be on all your grant applications with you meaning they're gonna ask for documentation from us as well as from you. So we wanna be able to get those things in order for you. Uh, and we wanna uh, have all of that when you, when, uh, before you submit. So that's another reason why we ask you to send it to us. In addition to us being the applicant on record and, and submitting documentations that represent us as well as you, we also will be included on your contracts. So if you get funded, we may need to sign your contract and submit it on your behalf, as well as submit reports to your funder. So we're really good at that. Uh, we're, really, we're really good at uh, setting reminders if you have a report coming up. So uh, we're gonna be just as invested as you are in these grants. So that is why keeping us in the loop uh, even in your beginning brainstorming of, you know, what funder should I be going to, have those conversations with us. We love to help. We love to hear about where you're thinking of applying because maybe a past fiscal, spon uh, fiscal sponsee has applied there, you know? We want to have, uh, be as involved as possible. So lastly, I'm going to talk about the staff review. We ask that you send us all your completed materials 10 days in advance of the deadline or when you intend to submit. So if the deadline is two weeks from now, but you want to submit at this, you know, at the end of this week, then we want to know your grant 10 days before you intend to submit. So whenever you intend to submit, send us all your materials for review 10 days beforehand. That gives us enough time to really thoroughly look at your materials, provide you with feedback, get our materials together, and so on. Uh, if anything is submitted to us five days or less before the submission date, we do have a rush grant review fee, and that's $75. And you can choose if you want that to be charged to your fund balance, uh, if you have funds in your fund balance, or to the credit card on file. So just to recap, if you're interested in applying to grants, yay, let us know. We wanna make sure that you've met that $1,000 eligibility requirement. We wanna make sure we have all your grant documents 10 days before you intend to submit so that we can review them and gather our documents. And then lastly, we are going to be most likely the applicant of, uh, on record for these applications that you are submitting. So we're going to be following up with you regarding contracts 
any reports to your funder. So, fun to keep in mind. Okay, so now we're going to go into how to what, what's next. So now that you've successfully solicited donations and had patrons donate to your fiscally sponsored project, how do you access these funds? Back to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, you're going to see the next icon. It says Fund Releases. So this is where you're going to go to request your funds. The very first thing you're going to want to do is set up your electronic bank transfer. If you didn't already do that through the fiscal sponsorship application, you can, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So underneath fund releases, you'll see sign up for electronic bank transfer. That will open up a downloadable PDF that you'll fill out with your bank account information, and then you're going to send it to us with either a voided check direct deposit form, a bank verification form, any type of confirmation that has your account number, your routing number, and your name. So those are the three things that we need if you're uh, sending us documentation that is not a voided check. We strongly recommend that you have an account for your project's finances that is separate from your personal finances. This doesn't need to be a business bank account. It can be a separate personal checking account. Uh, however, it does need to be checking. You cannot set up a savings bank account with, uh, with your fiscal sponsorship. So that's gonna be the very first step you do and you don't need to wait until you already have funds in your fund balance to set this up. You can do this tonight. And then, this is just an example of what that, that form looks like. You will need to sign it. So when you sign it, you can scan it and email it to us. You can fax it to us, or you can put it in the mail to us. If you need our fax number, it's 212-277-8025. It'll also be in this presentation. I think it's also on this form. I'm sure it's on page one of this form. Okay, so now that you've done your electronic bank transfer form, once you send it to us, we will give you confirmation once it's been connected to your fiscal sponsorship that you're now good to go to request funds. We'll also make you confirm the numbers so that they are correct uh, that, you, that you sent us. So now that you've done that, you're ready to request the funds. We hold donations for seven days after we process them to make sure that the check doesn't bounce or that the credit card isn't disputed. Uh, we, we, we don't want your donor to, to forget that they made a donation to your project and then cancel their donation. So we hold donations for seven days. After seven days, donated funds are available for you to request unless we're waiting on a major gift letter. So remember we were talking about major gift letters before for donation for check donations of $2,500 or more. So we're happy to hold on to donated funds for as long as you need us to. They will be there in your, your fund balance, provided that you remain at a dues paying member of Fractured Atlas with an active fiscal sponsorship. And then we can release them to you when you have project related expenses. So as funds come in, you don't need to request them right away. You can hold them in your fund balance until a project expense comes. We do not automatically transfer funds to your project. As a fiscal sponsor, we need to demonstrate that we maintain a certain degree of discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. The fund release request process is a control in place to make sure that fiscally sponsored projects are using funds for the purposes of their project. So just to recap, you're going to send, set up your EFT with us, that's uh, electronic fund transfer. Uh, and then your, as project related expenses arise, you're going to then go to fund releases and request funds to then submit a fund release request to us for the amount that you need. 
going to go over what submitting a fund release request looks like. So when you hit request funds, this is the page that will appear. When you submit a fund release request, you'll let us know how much you need and how you'll be spending the money using a broad list of possible expense categories. So you'll see expense category items right here. So you can say that say $1,000 is for public relations and 500 is for space rental. There is an option for other. Uh, however, something we'll let you know is that we almost never let anyone use other as an explanation for their expenses. So almost 100% of the time, your expenses will fit into the categories provided. If you really don't think your, your uh, expense fits into any of the categories, then you can reach out to us, let us know. Uh, and there is a note section, so you, know, you can elaborate further if you, know, you, you really are uncertain that what you selected really matches your expense. One thing that you're not allowed to do is re-grant funds through our program to another individual or entity with no strings attached. So now we're getting into uh, our policies here. The best use of fiscal sponsorship, the best use of, uh, of fiscal sponsorship is to raise money to spend on expenditures related to the art that you're creating or the service that you're providing. And this can be, and this can include paying people a salary or a stipend for their time, but you're not allowed to award grants through fiscal sponsorship funds to other entities. So an example of this would be you are working with a nonprofit to a nonprofit that services blind dogs. And you're working with this nonprofit to put on a play about adopting blind dogs. And you want to raise funds to then donate to this nonprofit. So you would not be able to raise funds through our program to donate to that nonprofit. You can raise funds through our program for the play that you're producing about blind dogs. And then maybe when you, if you want to sell tickets to the play, those ticket sales, since that is earned revenue and doesn't get processed by us, you can then donate that earned revenue to the nonprofit that services blind dogs. I hope that was a good, a good example, but that is ultimately what we mean by non-regranting uh, of funds. Okay. So for particularly large fund releases, we ask for an explanation of documentation, such as receipts, contracts, or invoices. Uh, so you can upload that onto your fund release request. You can send us a receipt if you are uh, maybe paying yourself back for an expense that you came out of pocket for, or if you are submitting an invoice for your actors uh, or a contract with your insurance to say this is how much the insurance was. Uh, so you can submit that as documentation in your fund release request. Now we're going to touch upon taxes. When you apply for fiscal sponsorship, if you recall, you were asked to provide a legal entity with the U.S. taxpayer ID. This is either an individual with a social security number or a business entity with an employer identification number, or EIN. We can work with any type of legal entity, and we ask for this information because funds dispersed through our fiscal sponsorship program are reported as taxable income to that legal entity in the form of a grant. Each January, we issue a 1099 miscellaneous to individuals, sole proprietors, partnerships, and LLCs showing funds dispersed the previous calendar year as box three other, or grant income to file with their other tax documents. Corporations are not issued 1099s, but they will still need to report fractionalist income on their tax documents. 
with that being said, you should not necessarily have to pay income tax on fractionalist fund releases if if you are i'm sorry i lost my train of thought well okay because we only release funds to you when you request it for use of your specific project related expenses you should be able to offset the income on your taxes using the expenses that you requested the funds to pay for so going back to what i was saying before you should because you're submitting fund release requests to us outlining the cost that these funds are going towards you should be then able to offset uh, the income on your taxes by showing those expenses and we do keep track uh well not keep track but we uh save all the fund release requests on your my fiscal sponsorship page so you can access that at any time you can access your fund release history uh, and we do encourage you to save all your receipts documents uh, contracts invoices even if we don't request it in the fund release request but still keep it because when you do your taxes it would be invaluable to you we also strongly recommend that you work with an accountant to file and keep careful documentation of your expenditures. If you have any questions, we can uh, help you. Uh, we have a referral of an accountant that we send some, uh, an accountant firm that we send people to if they have questions. So reach out to us if you are uncertain and we can point you in the right direction. Okay, so now we want to go over something important. Uh, something to keep in mind is that your project is a separate business entity from Fractionalis. One of the great aspects of this is that you maintain complete ownership over the work that you create. But we do not grant you 501c3 status. Only the IRS can do that. So rather we are extending some of the benefits of our nonprofit status to the projects that we sponsor. So to keep in mind with that being said we ask that you don't use our tax id so to that extent we'll want you to check in with us on a few things primarily the use of our tax id i'm sure if a friend of yours asked for your social security number you would be curious about why in the same way anytime you encounter a situation that requires our ein please let us know and we would advise on its usage. We're happy to provide sponsorship confirmation letters addressed to a specific potential donor or sponsors to help grease the wheels, but we cannot provide a one size fits all confirmation document with our EIN, as we want to be involved each and every time someone is requesting that information. So if, again, if you do have a potential donor or a sponsor that needs our EIN for processes of giving you a donation, send us an email to support at fractionalis.org, giving us uh, that donor's name, and we can draft a special letter specifically for that donor. We are not able to help, set, help you set up a bank account using our EIN. Any account that you create needs to be set up in your own name with your own tax ID. So don't sign up for anything that requires our tax ID without running it by us first. We can also provide a letter to help you obtain nonprofit rates from vendors that offer, that offer them. It's ultimately up to the vendor if they will extend you the rate, but most are willing to do so. This is especially helpful with space requests. If the venue offers a nonprofit rate, we can usually help you get that discount. Again, send us an email letting us know what you're seeking, whether it's a nonprofit rate request letter or a sponsorship confirmation letter with our EIN for a donor. Uh, we'll just need to know either the donor's name or the vendor that is offering the nonprofit uh, discount, and then we can draft that letter specifically for them. Nonprofit rates do not apply to bulk postage for your mailings. This is something that you would only have access to if you had your own 501c3 status. 
We're also not able to help you with sales tax exemption because it is handled at the state level and our lawyers have advised us against it since the exempt entity must be the purchaser. So we're not purchasing, Fractal House is not purchasing things on your behalf, so we wouldn't be able to then give uh, that sales exemption, that, I'm sorry, that sales tax exemption of, over to our fiscally sponsored projects. Next, we're gonna get into the annual part. The final major fiscal sponsorship policy to bring to your attention is our annual report. For any fiscally sponsored project that either process donations or requested fund releases in a given calendar year, we are going to require that you submit to us an annual report updating us on your activities. The report is always gonna be due April 1st and we will send out three reminders starting at the beginning of the year. If you don't complete the report by April 1st, we will freeze your project but it's relatively simple to unfreeze your fiscal sponsorship, so don't be too afraid of that. Uh, well, be afraid of it. Oh, well, we want you to submit your, your report, but if it happens that you submit your report on April 2nd, don't, don't be afraid because we can, we can unfreeze your fiscal sponsorship. So all you need to do is submit your report and then we can unfreeze it. And you can access your annual report where on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, that great place that has everything and anything, you can access your annual report on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under Info Reports. So again, Info Reports is where you're gonna see your fund balance, you can view your full fund history, so um, that's, that's, that's where you're gonna go to you know, keep track of how much money you've been raising through us. And the report is entirely, entirely online, so you don't need to prepare a different document. Uh, and, the, the f and, and, and the document has two major components. The first is that we ask you to provide a brief narrative description of what you accomplished the previous calendar year. This can be as detailed as you like. With the narrative, you'll you, you provide a numerical impact for your work to show how many people were exposed to your work and how many artists participated. So that's what we're asking. We also ask for updated financials. Because we only process contributed revenue for your fiscally sponsored project, we are only aware of income and expenditures relating to the funds that we've handled. So here's an opportunity to tell us about other funds handled separately from the program. Where they, can, where they came from, how they were spent. Also, if you changed how funds were released through our program, then uh, for example, if you release $1,000 for transportation, uh, and that's what you indicated on the fund release, but on the annual report, you realize I used that $1,000 for uh, utilities. Here's a chance that you can correct that so that our records are as accurate as possible. The annual report is another important way for us, uh, is another important way that we demonstrate the discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. But this is also a way for us to collect data about the artists and arts organizations that we serve, so we can better understand our own impact in the nonprofit arts sector. The more accurately you can provide your data, the more complete our picture is for the kind of business our sponsored projects are able to do in their own communities. So we really, really love your annual report. Well, I mean, I really love your annual reports. I love reading what people have done in the past year. Uh, it, it's not a lengthy annual report. It's really uh, smooth and short and to the point. And, uh, a lot of times working at Fractionalis, we handle so many of these projects and it's always nice to, to see the real impact that you all are doing and, and, you know, share your pictures with us, share your rewards, your announcements, your, excite, your excitement in your report because, you know, we come to work to help you. So we, we want to know what you're doing. We want to stay updated the same way your fans want to stay updated. Okay, I'm rambling. Sorry. <laughs> so now I'm gonna open. Uh, I'm gonna open up for questions momentarily. But 
I hope you've gotten a sense for how easy our physical sponsorship program is to use and how much power you have at your own fingertips. Because that, my physical sponsorship page, is just so much is, is, is accessible to you right there. Um, and I would really encourage you to go through and explore that page even further um, and also look at our knowledge base that I was, you know, referring to you earlier about, which is under that help tab, you'll see knowledge base. It's a whole lot of information in there. Uh, and, and before we open up for questions, I do want to quickly introduce fiscal, uh, I'm sorry, fractionalis as a whole, because uh, we do have some other things that I think you all could really benefit from. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna cover. Uh, oh, hey, so I saw someone has a question about the fiscal sponsorship application. So you can let me know if there's a specific question you have, I can address it now, uh, but if it is very specific, specific to you, uh, then yes, we can definitely, you can call us at any time. We're happy to answer questions on the phone. But if it's, if it's like a general application question, feel free to send me that. I'm happy to, to answer those questions in the group. Uh, but if it's more specific to you, then send us an email and we can Okay, so I'm gonna, before we get into Artfully, uh, someone did have a fiscal sponsorship question about the application. So we went over the application. We didn't really touch upon the application because I think everyone is fiscally sponsored on this call. But uh, if you do remember the application, yes, you do have to enter in a legal entity and you do have to give a website. It could be for the time being, could be, um, if you just have like a Facebook page or it, it doesn't have to be necessarily too formed of a website. We're not critiquing your website at the moment, uh, but you do have to have an online presence. This just makes uh, the verification of who you say you are, the project uh, more concrete. We're able to look you up. You have an online presence uh, and you do have to either upload an image or a video. And the reason for that is because the moment you are approved for physical sponsorship, that donation landing page that we were looking at earlier instantly goes live. So that was the question we, we just received. I, I hope I answered that. Uh, so yes, you need a website. Yes, you need either a photo or video for the application. Uh, and again, we're, we're not critiquing you on the website or the photo or the video. Uh, okay. All right. So before we really dive into more questions, uh, I do want to introduce some of the other fiscal, I'm sorry, the other programs at Fractured Atlas. Uh, the first one being something that I think every single person on this call needs to jump on board right away with because Artfully is just the, the best, the best it is. It's an online system to help manage your tickets, donations, and contacts. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's a way to keep track of events, people, and your everyday work. So on Artfully, you can sell tickets through your site uh, or through an Artfully storefront. You can sync MailChimp lists and contacts. You can provide ticket buyers and donors with automatic email receipts, among other things, to manage tickets, tickets and patrons. So even if you're not uh, selling tickets at, at this moment, I still encourage you to, to go to Artfully because it works so well with our fiscally sponsored projects. Uh, you can keep track of your donors and other fans all in the same place. It's a great way to start understanding your audience, managing your segments, and organizing your communications. So once you connect your fiscal sponsorship to Artfully, 
Now, all of your donor's information will be saved in Artfully. So if, say you're done uh, fundraising through us, you've left the fiscal sponsorship program, your information will still remain, I'm sorry, your donor's information and your donation history will still remain accessible through Artfully. So making those segments, you can do that. You can say, all right, you can create a list of these are the people who donated in 2017, here are the people who donated in 2016, and you can keep those segmented lists there and then also target your communications specifically to those people. So maybe you wanna send uh, your fans from 2016 a note to say, hey, haven't, haven't heard from you, we miss you. Uh, so Artfully is really great for being able to have targeted communications with your different fans. Uh, something I also really love about Artfully is that if you are selling tickets through Artfully and you're fiscally sponsored, your patrons at checkout will have the option to also become your donors. So we'll give them uh, a little box at the end to say, hey, did you know that this project is fiscally sponsored and your donation could be tax deductible? Would you like to give a donation? So we give your patrons that option at checkout. Uh, and again, it's just a really simple way to keep everything in one place. Artfully is wonderful. If you want uh, someone to go over how to set up Artfully, feel free to email us or give us a call and we can help you with that. Now we're going to go over Space Finder. Space Finder is an online marketplace that matches renters with venues that meet their unique needs. For artists, the process of finding workspaces can be so frustrating. Meanwhile, venues have limited resources to, pen, to spend finding new renters. So Space Finder is like the, the space and artist tender that we've always needed. So Space, space Finder connects venues and artists. You can uh, search by different needs. So say you need a wheelchair accessible space that has nonprofit rate rentals and uh, you need it to be available at a certain date. You can uh, customize your list, your, I'm sorry, your search based on those criteria, and then you can save that search so then you can go back to it uh, at, at a later time and, and maybe even save your favorite places that you go to back, uh, back and back for, for rentals. So that is Space Finder. Uh, through Space Finder, uh, Fractionalis is increasingly increasing visibility of rental options, helping artists find the space that they need, and helping venues promote and rent their space. There are over 5,000 spaces listed and 554,000 searches for space every year. So that's just some numbers. These are the places we're currently at. Now we're gonna go over insurance. Thanks for the thanks to the combined purchasing power of the Fractionalis community, our members have access to high quality coverage for much lower rates than they would otherwise be possible. Most importantly, with one foot in the arts and another world in the insurance, we've worked with some of the world's leading insurance companies to design a number of proprietary insurance programs that are specifically tailored to meet your specific needs. We've even made the process as quick and painless as possible. So. All right, those were the three programs uh, that we have outside of fiscal sponsorship. Uh, insurance, Space Finder, and Artfully. So uh, again, they're there. Uh, so now I'm gonna open it up for questions and it looks like I just got my first question. Uh, and it says, will the new tax bill affect fiscal sponsorship? That is a great question. That is a question that we are still asking ourselves uh, as nothing concrete has been uh, put forth yet we cannot make any calls on the program. The program is still running smoothly. We are still processing donations and we are still giving tax receipts. Uh, so as of right now, it has not affected our program, uh, but you should definitely keep in contact with your accountant and uh, figure out what this might mean for tax season. But as of right now, we don't have any concrete uh, news to give and once we do you best believe we will be letting everyone know 
I hope that answered that question. Does anyone have any other questions for me? I, this is our email, support at fractialis.org and our phone number here. Please reach out to us. Um, when, when I'm not giving a presentation, I, I like to have conversations and I'm not so, so nervous. So you can definitely call me or, or email support. Uh, we do have a lot more webinars available on our YouTube as well as on that knowledge base that I was telling you about before. So we have webinars on uh, grant writing, proposals, crowdfunding, building a budget. Yes, uh, we will get a copy of this webinar. I'm going to be emailing it to everyone so you can share it. Uh, and and listen to it again. Listen to my my semi sick voice. No problem. All right, so I'm gonna stay here for a little while longer to see if anyone has any more questions. Uh, if not, please best you know. Thank you for for staying and listening to me, and thank you for joining Fractured Atlas. We really appreciate the the work that you're doing. Please keep us in the loop. So this webinar is done. You can leave, you can ask me questions. I'm just gonna be here to answer questions. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be here. I'll stay on until 8.30. And for anyone that came in late, my name is Sabrina. You can follow up with me. And yes, we will be doing more webinars soon. Uh, you can see some upcoming, you can see a list of some of our past webinars and keep track of upcoming webinars on fractionalist.org. Uh, you can email or, or call me or call anyone on the team. Thanks for listening. I wish I had music for you guys. So we just got a great question from Walter. Um, Walter is interested in posting about being fiscally sponsored on uh, social media. So uh, wanted to know about any examples of what other people, what other people have posted. Uh, so Walter, you have a great idea. Definitely spread the word. Uh, going back to what we were talking about before, that, that standard text is a good, uh, a good two sentences that you can always include in anything that you're sending out that mentions fact chat lists or tax deductible donations. And I'll show you what that, uh, that standard text, it ultimately says, you know, so-and-so is a sponsored project of fact chat atlas, a nonprofit arts service organization, charitable uh, donations made to the charitable purpose uh, of, you know, donations made to fractionalists for the charitable purposes of the project are tax deductible by law. So you can include that. Uh, I would I would suggest including that maybe on the um, underneath the photo if you're putting it on Instagram. Maybe on the photo, like if you're putting a photo, you can just say, "Hey, we're fiscally sponsored," and then in the text you can explain that further. If you're looking for that, 
uh, that standard text, you can, um, if you go to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, let me go back, I'll show you. So if you go to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, underneath fundraising templates, that standard text will be included on the fundraising templates. Also, on our knowledge base, which you can find if you go to fractionalist.org, if you go to help, knowledge base, and then fiscal sponsorship. So I probably should have showed everyone this earlier, but um, it's loading. Okay, so this is our fiscal sponsorship knowledge base. So much information is going to be here, but also so webinars, upcoming webinars, uh, I'm sorry, past webinars are saved here. Uh, and then if you're looking for that standard text, you're going to see it right here underneath applying for grants. What is standard text? So if you click on that, we have a few different standard texts. Uh, this is the one that I, I just referred to. So this is a quick two sentence that you can then include anywhere. Uh, if you have partially deductible donations, remember we were talking about giving perks and things like that, you would want to use this standard text. And then uh, standard text for grants, foundations would be down here. Uh, what I will say is uh, if you are like, I don't know what standard text to use or uh, I'm uncertain on that, don't worry because when you send us things for review, we're going to be looking for this and we'll make any edits and let you know this is the right standard text. But I don't think you need to hold off on posting anything on social media. You should most definitely be spreading that word on social media and just say, hey, we're physically sponsored. Yeah, you know, really show that excitement. Uh, and then you can include these two, these two lines right here. Uh, under the standard text of fully deductible donations. And I, I think you'll be all right if it's just like a, a Facebook post, you know. Can, you should be including a link to your donation landing page, you know, remind people about that all the time. Say, hey, you can donate right here. All right, if anyone has any other questions. So uh, going back to that grant, I just got a question about uh, the grant eligibility requirements. So remember, uh, raising $1,000 of contributed revenue before you're applying to grants. So if you raised funds before coming to uh, this fiscal sponsorship, you don't, uh, you'll want to just show us any type of documentation of that. So whether it was like an Excel sheet, maybe if you have an Excel sheet with all your donors' names and the date that they gave and the amount that they gave, you know, something just verifying that these were your donations within the past two years. Uh, so if you accepted cash donations, that's fine. Uh, we just need to have some type of record. So if you just have a record of here are all the donors that gave to us and this is a list of their donations, it equals 1500 You know, so anything like that will be fine. If anyone has no problem. So we just got another question for that grant eligibility. Uh, it doesn't have to be a certain number of donors. We're just looking to make sure that you've hit at least a thousand dollars of contributed revenue, uh, contributed revenue within the last two years for the specific project that you were approved to fundraise for through our program. So it can't be for a different film or a different project. It does have to be for the project that you're fundraising for now. And it could be even one donation. Say you got a grant last year uh, for $1,000. You can send us that grant award letter.
So. Oh, happy new year to you too. Thanks for staying on the phone. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, I'll, I'll leave up this knowledge base here because I realized I didn't really uh, direct you to how to find this. It's help, knowledge base, and then here are some of our programs and services. Fiscal sponsorship is here. Um, and this is all the information that you can find. If anyone has any other questions, uh, it's 8.30, so I think I'm gonna close up shop now. But again, here is, let me go back to that page. Um, here is our contact information. So if you do have questions after this, please email support at fractionalist.org or give us a call. We love, love, love hearing from you. So please reach out. Don't be strangers. We're here to help. All right. Thank you so much for staying on, everyone. I hope you have a great night. Take care, and I look forward to talking with you all very soon. All right. Good night.